is this upcoming season for the Los Angeles Kings the final one of this series? More than likely, yes. Although we don't yet know what this team is going to look like by the time this next season begins. That said, I do have to move forward with the utmost transparency. I had a general idea of what this team was going to be because I got about 15 to 20 minutes into this recording and then I lost power for two seconds, just long enough to completely screw me over to the point where I have to redo this. So that's, that's a fun time. So I do know for the most part what I want to do. In that initial run, I re-signed Yuri Gleboff. I did. Now, whether or not I'm able to do that this time, I don't know. I presume there will be because Ottawa has very little cap space when trying to re-sign him. So that is a part of the plan. You're going to see me moving forward here with stuff in this video as we continue on here. Of course, we're live with this. Turcock Genther, Turcock Genther. Um, you know, you're going to see me move along, you know, with a game plan in mind because I've already been through this. So a lot of the, the build-up and the decision-making and if I'm trading somebody, spoiler alert, I am... I know right where I want to send him and what for because I had already figured that out in the past. That said, looking at this team, and the bottom line is I don't even have to be here at this particular menu. We can just get straight into the re-sign phase. You know, looking ahead here, again, we don't know what this team is going to look like. There are going to be some changes to the lineup, but for the most part, I'm pretty confident and pretty happy with what this team can end up being. Goaltending-wise, we know Hellebuck and Blackwood are on the way out. That's just not going to happen. Blackwood doesn't want to sign here. Hellebuck's looking for way too much money given his track record. They're both gone. We acquired them for extremely cheap, all things considered. So it's not that much of a loss to have acquired their rights at the draft. Mr. Mercier needs to sign his ELC. Pretty straightforward. And on the flip side here, as I tried to... Uh, Tried to suppress that burp, couldn't do it. On the flip side here, I talked about whether or not I wanted to re-sign Jordan Spence and Ned Patrick. I ultimately decided on I might as well, because why not? It'll help for the sake of morale to still have them on the roster instead of bringing in random guys who might be one or two points better. Taking a look at the wings. Duhame, obviously going to be on the way out. Climber needs to sign his ELC as well. And I know some people aren't going to be happy. We can't sign Tyler Madden to $6 million on the third line. We just can't do it. Tyler Madden's time here is over as much as I hate to say it. Avani, good old Manny Avani, will be signing his ELC. Drake Reimsha shall be coming back as well for the Ontario Reigns. So, again, unfortunately, Tyler Madden, could he stay if there wasn't the whole RFA controversy with what happened last season with Kent the Turcotte and Savoy? Yes. So ultimately, that's my punishment, and that's, you know, the sacrifice is that we lose an amazing role player like Tyler Madden because I chose the worst time in the game's logic to try and sign someone to an extended contract. So it's just, it's the way it is, unfortunately. Uh, Rimesha actually rejected, which is weird. He didn't reject the last time I sent him a deal. Uh, if he wants to leave, so be it. He can do that, and we're going to move ahead to free agency. So... Again, ultimately, I would have loved to have kept Tyler Madden. You talk about the multi-millions of dollars that we would have saved had we been able to sign our RFAs last year to team-friendly deals. We would have been fine. But, like I said, apparently if you send a contract off, and I knew this too, I just made the mistake. But if, you know, once the cup's awarded, do not try to re-sign someone before they confirm the cap towards the, ne you know, the next season. Otherwise, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. That said, I talked about a trade, and I know exactly who I want to get. To free up a little bit more cap space, we're going to be acquiring this defenseman here, Per Gunnarsson, Per Gunnarsson, Par Gunnarsson, whatever. Uh, solid enough defensive option. Not that we necessarily need another defensive option, although in theory, we do. Uh, Kale Clegg is going to be up at the end of this upcoming season, and ultimately, I think we're going to have to look to potentially replace him, depending on the money that he wants. But the man being moved for him is one Joachim Blickfeld, a phenomenal player given the contract and just in general a tremendous player. You could talk about someone who could easily be the Tyler Madden replacement, but to ensure that uh, Mr. Gleboff signs with us, unfortunately, that little bit of cap space we can free up by moving Blickfeld and acquiring a good prospect in return was too good to pass up. So that deal is done. Now I hope I pray that Gleboff is still here, and he should be. Now, forward-wise, there's quite a few, you know, good 
forward and defenseman in terms of overall. But let's see here. Oh, thank God. All right, so we're back in business. Thank God for that. So when it comes down to it, of course, you know, forward-wise, defensive-wise, we're fine. We're set. And you'll see that with the roster in a few minutes. With Gleboff. now last time he only wanted a one-year deal. This year he's looking for two, but I'm allowed to adjust it to one, and that leaves him as an RFA. He wants $7.9 million for the year, so it's going to be a first, second, and a third that we have to give up for him, but that's not a big deal for us because that, you know we might get that back, if not more, by the end of next season. And keep this in mind. I like to play franchise mode if there's a set of rules. I like to stick to those rules because it makes no sense not to. I don't like being like, oh, okay, it's the final season. Let's just blow it up. No. If it's about blowing it up and building a super team, let that be the theme of the series all the way through. All right? Kind of like what we're doing on Patreon right now. That said, we are going to offer him the max. Ottawa can't match it, but I want to make sure he signs with us and nobody else. That extra cap space is not a big deal as the rest of the roster is set. He is the only guy I'm looking to sign right now. We're going to go to August 1st, hopefully once he does sign, and then we'll fill out the roster from there uh, as we see fit in terms of forwards and defensemen and really figuring that out. So here in the meantime, I do still need to try and sign some scouts now that we lost quite a few. And we will just go for the best of the best sign as many of you as we need to so like i said it certainly kind of cuts down on the video time <laughs> to be like hey here's a set plan because i've already been through this for the most part it was right around this time once pretty much the second gleboff confirmed his contract i lost power so that was bizarre and kind of unfortunate but hey at least we can you know keep up the motivation and ugh, be okay <laughs> everything's fine so we'll see how that works out for us let's sim ahead and see if we can confirm the return of Yuri Gleboff which hopefully we can be again we chose hit you know we chose Carter Hart over him it turned out to be the right decision we want to you know stand the cup while Carter Hart was here but this is Gleboff's chance while this team is still incredibly competitive to prove that maybe we made the wrong choice maybe we would have had more than one Stanley Cup by this point in time which could honestly very well have been the case. So a couple of these scouts we can't sign, which is fine. Yuri Gleboff has signed. Tremendous. Now the question is, will Ottawa be able to match? And the answer is no. Yuri Gleboff returns to the Los Angeles Kings. And we now have our goaltender. As I'm going to have to decline a ton of trades here, at least if it's anything like uh, how it went down last time when I was at this point. I did have to decline quite a few trades. Oh, yeah, it's it's happening. I just want to get to August 1st. Good Lord. Marcus Phillips is incredibly in demand. You know what? That's close enough to the first. <laughs> Screw it. Allow me to sign the free agents that I want to sign. And if I'm not mistaken, it would be five goaltenders that we already have. So we need a defenseman, and the rest of the team needs to be out of forwards. So we're going to look at those who are willing to accept a two-way deal. So we're looking at the likes of Sean Day, a new free agent in Sean Day. Actually, someone asked me about this on stream last night. I'm kind of surprised the Rangers are letting him go, but a fresh start might be what he needs. Obviously, a lot of people know it's like, okay, he's one of the players back in junior who was granted you know, exemption status and hasn't really cracked the NHL yet. Still has a shot in real life, I would say, all things considered. So there's also Sebastian Ajo, and speaking of, uh, speaking of former Rangers, Joey Keane also there. Connor Clifton. Ooh, there's a lot of good defensemen. You know, we could bring back Matt Roy after all of this. You know, let's, let's do that. I'm going to bring back Matt Roy. I can't believe I'm saying that. I don't even know if he has any friends left on the team, but we'll try to bring back Matt Roy. And then for forwards, is this Maverick Bork? It is, but he's an RFA. Uh, okay, we're only going to look for UFAs. So Kevin Hayes is a veteran. I'd be too afraid that he's going to drop off. Vitaly Abramov. Trevor Moore. Let's bring Trevor Moore back to the team. Sounds like a good idea to me. Sam Fogamo. Well, we're getting we're getting the reunion going. The boys are back. What else do we have here? Lockwood, Furlan, Kajula. Wow, Cole Caulfield never developed. But look at those offensive stats. You want to talk about a potential gem on the third line, power play specialist for us at the NHL level. It could be Cole Caulfield this year. That's crazy. That is absolutely insane. 
Ryder Donovan, Jake Lecision. I'm more looking for former Kings first that we could get a good momentum, or uh, not momentum, but morale boost off of. Unfortunately, we appear to be out of those particular options. Nazem Kadri, a free agent as well. Aside from like Duhame and Sanford, there's obviously a lot of familiar names that we've seen have success within franchise. Okay, interesting. I just wanted to kind of kind of be able to take note of who was there. We'll wait for these first couple to accept. I'm going to have to edit the uh, trade block as well. Matt Roy is back. Cole Caulfield signs. That's weird. Trevor Moore, Fogamo as well. Philip Deneau and Connor Sherry have been traded to Minnesota for a first-round pick and some other pieces. And from there, we do need to sign a couple more forwards to really help fill out this roster. So let's see what we have. Again, out of pretty much names that I feel like signing. And, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Who do I feel like signing? <laughs> Who do I feel like signing? Uh, you know, let's let's bring in... Do I want to bring in Brett Senny? Not really. Let's bring in Vitaly Abramov. I'm going to bring in Abramov. He could be a great option for us. Take a look at some of the stats here, too. Marchenko. Damn. I mean, he can't shoot, but everything else is pretty good for Marchenko here. You know, we might as well go for him. Why not? That brings us up to 42. There's Boris Kachuk, who one hell of a skater, can't really play defense, isn't overly physical. Eh. Eh. Can't play him in the top six. He's not defensively well rounded enough for the third line, not physical enough for a fourth line. So, great skater, but unfortunately, I don't really know how well we could utilize that. You know what? Screw it. Your name's Boris. Sign him up. That's now 43. Cliff Poo is a fourth liner, so I'm not going to be bringing him in. Brett Senny, third line option could work. Will Lockwood, we're not going to bring in. And he's a great skater. I mean, he might do really well in the AHL, given the speed, but. I mean, for an NHL level, he won't be one of the guys we look to give a shot to. So we're up to 45 contracts. Don't really want to look to bring in too many vets here. But the 33-year-old Drake Kajula, I wouldn't really expect him to regress. So we'll go ahead and sign him. That'll bring us up to 36 deals. That should be good enough in the meantime. We can double-check once we get to you know, spring, <laughs> spring training. I was going to say training camp. Baseball. I have Twitter open, and there's something that literally mentions, so what about spring training? <laughs> just one of the things that you catch out of the corner of your eye that's just kind of in the back of your head, the old subconscious, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, spring training, training camp. But hey, what are you going to do? I'm, I'm cool with looking foolish. I think I've, I think we've won a Super Bowl before, and I called it the Stanley Cup. It's easy to, very, very easy to, you know, Kind of get tongue-tied and everything when you think of so many different things. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Everything is pretty good. Let's see how this goes moving forward. How's this gonna look? Let's see what's up. Oh, the sim speed. So how are you guys as we sit here and await the sim speed? Hey, never mind. I actually went by pretty quickly. Let's see. Oh, what we're dealing with here. First and foremost, unsigned prospects, just to make sure no one else went through a decent amount of development. And just a boy, Kla did, who of course is in the queue, so we will not be signing him. So let's take a look at this roster, shall we? Let's take a look here. See what we got. So for goaltenders, perfect. Gleboff, Kalanos, good one-two punch. Down the HL, it's going to be Manderville, Twilminen, and Parker. I don't really feel the need to sign a sixth goaltender. We should be fine. Defensively, Dunn, Anisimov, up to an 87. Fantastic. So that would be the top pairing. Then Clegg, Bjorn fought, but Drury is already a top four defenseman, which means somebody's got to go. And it's going to be either Clegg or Bjorn fought. And I can't help but think Bjorn fought's going to be the guy who's elected to go. Thing about Bjorn fought, five years left. Clegg just won. At 29 years old, we have a huge decision to make. And the problem is, Clegg isn't a fantastic fit for that second pair. He's a great first pair fit. So that's a decision to make. Mauricio Drury as well is a tremendous fit for that first pairing. Interesting. I mean, you have Clegg and... Uh, I think you have Clegg Drury on the first pairing. 
Then you have Dunn with Anisimov on the second pair. I think Bjorn fought's out just for the the simple fact that... Well, actually, he's a great fit on the second pairing, too. What am I saying here? So we have Drury and Clegg on the top pairing. The problem with Anisimov is he doesn't match this coach very well, but we have no choice but to keep him. Somebody's got to go there. Mo Marsh is still good to go. And we could make the choice of who plays third pairing with Marsh. It's probably going to be Phillips. I think Mercier leads the uh, AHL defense here, although technically he's still going to be in junior, apparently. So we got to kind of make that choice if we want to give Mercier the opportunity on the third pair as opposed to Phillips and have Phillips be the healthy scratch. I mean, bottom line is one of our top four defensemen has to go, and it's going to be Clegg because he only has one year left, or Tobias Bjornfot. One of the two has to go. And then forward-wise, we have one, two, three, four, five. Anderson Dolan will be third line while Van Kattishen's in the top six. So in the third line, I mean, you have the likes of Curry. But obviously here, I don't want these guys involved. I want it to be some of the younger guys like Vandenbush, Powell, and Avani, uh, Albrecht as well. Someone else who could potentially deserve an opportunity. But then again, you talk about Cole Caulfield and what he could bring offensively to this team. It's interesting. I mean, especially Van Kaddish in there as well. We have some pretty good options here, all things considered. If we send those guys down, I probably want to send down Kachuk as well. That'll bring us underneath the limit. But say we call up... Let's just say we focus on the dudes we have now. Let's focus on Albrecht and Hill. Call them up for the moment. It's 10, 11, 12, and 13 with Hill. And pretty much figure out out of the group that we drafted, you know, who should be at the NHL, who should be at the AHL level. And then again, Cole Caulfield is there as a tremendous option, if need be. Of course, we can call up Phillips and Mercier as well now. So that is the million-dollar question, or potentially the $4 million question. Who stays, who goes between Clegg and Bjornfot, and then figuring out who fits in best with this forward core, who we want to give an opportunity to first, and then we make adjustments from there. But there's no doubt, uh, apparently I'm not cap compliant. I am 70 over, are you kidding me? I'll send down Hill for the moment. There we go. So, you know, we're going to have to figure out optimization for this roster, but we're still set up incredibly well right now. I'm extremely happy with this team, and there's no doubt that we still have a, you know, a chance to compete here heading into the next season. But, you know, you talk here about this roster, I mean, Kale Clegg, going to be a UFA. Now might be the right time. As much as I'd love to have Kale Clegg for this season, it might make more sense to get rid of him. Not saying he's not worth that. But we have a very interesting choice to make. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys. I want to hear from you who's going to be on this team as we make what could be, what probably will be, our final stand in going after the Stanley Cup.